This is the Arena District in Columbus, Ohio. According to their website, it is one of the country's premier office, sports, dining, and entertainment destinations. With 1.5 million square feet of office space, 300,000 square feet of retail, restaurant, and entertainment venues, and more than 1,000 residential units. The area has enjoyed success in recent years due to the diversity of businesses, entertainment venues, residential units, and most importantly, the continuing investments made by nationwide realty investors into the neighborhood. According to the COO of Nationwide Realty Investors, Brian Ellis, the company has put over a billion dollars into the Arena District since it began in 1997. The Arena District is a model of mixed-use urban redevelopment anchored by a sports venue, and it can be replicated by other cities for converting underutilized land into areas of economic growth. However, this area did not used to be the entertainment hub of Columbus. In fact, it was the complete opposite. The ground on which Nationwide Arena was built used to be home to the Ohio State Penitentiary. The Ohio State Penitentiary was built in 1834 and remained in operation until 1979. The conditions inside the prison were horrendous as described by Ohio History Central. Prisoners first slept on straw mattresses, although eventually beds were built. Food was very simple, usually consisting of cornbread, beans, and bacon. As a result of these poor living conditions, there were three riots that occurred in the penitentiary's history, and one fire which claimed the lives of over 320 inmates. The fire occurred in 1930, at a time when the penitentiary was experiencing overcrowding and was working to expand the number of cells available for prisoners. A fire broke out on the construction site, but prisoners in the adjacent cell block were already locked up for the night and were unable to escape. It was one of the worst disasters to ever occur in the United States penal system. In 1979, the prison was eventually ordered to be shut down and demolished as a result of prison reforms across the country, and prisoners were transferred to a modern facility in Lucasville, Ohio. The area remained vacant in the heart of downtown Columbus for over a decade, while city officials debated on what to do with the empty land. In 1986 and 1987, lawmakers introduced a series of proposals which would use public money from increased taxes in order to revitalize the area. The plan was to build a convention center which doubled as an arena for the Columbus crew in order to fill out the vacant neighborhood. These proposed taxes would have raised sales tax by 25%, but, voted, but voters rejected both proposals and a number of action groups including VAST, Voters Against Stadium Taxes, and Citizens for Private Development encouraged them to do so. It wasn't until the city of Columbus purchased the area for $1 from the state of Ohio in 1995 that the area finally showed signs of life. The city spent over $7, $7 million to clean up the area in order to make it attractive to potential new investors. Finally, in 1997, John H. McConnell, owner of a successful steel company in Columbus, Worthington Steel, gathered a group of investors in order to bring a professional hockey team to the city. Nationwide Insurance also agreed to privately finance the construction of the $150 million arena. The arena district was built on a number of phases beginning with the initial construction of Nationwide Arena in 1987, which was completed in 2000. The Columbus Blue Jackets played their first official NHL game on October, on October 7, 2000. After the completion of the arena, Nationwide Realty funded the construction of a number of businesses, bars, and restaurants to surround it and stimulate the neighborhood. One of the first major entertainment venues to open was the LC Pavilion. It was one of the first indoor-outdoor concert venues of its kind in the United States. The LC has a seating capacity of 2,400 in the indoor portion, in the indoor portion and 5,000 for the outdoor amphitheater. In 2016, the name for the venue was changed to Express Live. In 2009, another major addition to the Marine District was made with the opening of Huntington Park, home of the Columbus Clippers. The Clippers are a AAA minor league baseball team and are the official affiliates of the Cleveland Indians. The opening of Huntington Park across the street from Express Live now officially solidified the, the Arena District as a year-round entertainment hub for Columbus. Baseball would dominate the spring and summer months, while hockey would control the fall and winter. Both the LC Pavilion and Huntington Park were important additions to the Arena District. They have provided a stable influx of visitors to the area, especially during the NHL offseason. The Arena District is also home to a wide variety of restaurants for its patrons. Visitors can experience South American food, such as Rodizio Grill, a Brazilian steakhouse, or Nada, which is described as upscale modern Mexican food. The Arena District is also home to Gordon Biersch, an American brewery and restaurant, or the Three-Legged Mayor, an Irish bar and restaurant which is always popular on game days. These restaurants keep fans in the Arena District before and after big events, 
and have helped to bolster the economy of the area. In addition to all these attractions for the over 6 million annual visitors, Nationwide Realty is also committed to keeping its residents happy who live in some of the most expensive buildings in downtown Columbus. The Arena District Athletic Club opened in 2005 and offers top-of-the-line equipment and amenities to its members. Despite being located in downtown Columbus, the developers of the Arena District also wanted to preserve green space for its residents, and there are two parks located within the Arena District. The first is McPherson Commons, or Arch Park. It is called Arch Park because of the arch which was a part of the former Union Station located in Columbus, which was demolished in 1979. The park hosts a number of activities in the summer, including yoga and kickball, and in the winter it is home to an ice rink. The other park that is a part of the Arena District is North Bank Park. It is located on the Scioto River and forms the northern anchor for the Scioto Mile, a series of bike paths and trails which wind along the banks of the river. North Bank Park is located on the site of the pump station for the Ohio State Penitentiary and also offers a pavilion which residents are able to rent out for weddings or special events. Arch Park and North Bank Park were important additions to the Arena District. Although they do not provide any sort of return for the financiers of the Arena District, they help to break up the industrial buildings and provide space for residents and visitors to roam. Officially, the last phase of the Arena District was completed in the summer of 2014 with the construction of the headquarters for Columbia Gas of Ohio and the final addition to the residential complex, Flats on Vine. But developers are still planning on making additions to the area in order to connect it to nearby Grandview. The next big project for the area is the construction for the new Columbus Crew Stadium, which recently broke ground on October 19th. Here's a short video detailing their plans for the future. In addition to the new stadium, a number of new buildings are being planned, including two hotels and the headquarters for Chipotle. The new stadium for the Columbus Crew is set to open in the summer of 2021. The Iranian District has continued to enjoy great success in a short amount of time and continues to attract new patrons every year. It has established itself as one of the nation's premier areas for mixed-use development, combining entertainment, commercial enterprise, and residential life flawlessly, and there are still plans for expansion in the area. It should be used as a model for cities looking to revitalize their economies and convert dormant districts into areas of economic growth.